If I rotate the camera, the character rotates along with it. This is our desired behavior when moving, as it facilitates strafing. We can move in a direction different than our facing. When standing still, we do not want the character to immediately rotate along with the camera. Instead, the character should remain facing in a single direction while the camera rotates, and it should then play a turn-in-place animation to realign itself when the difference between the character's facing and the camera's facing exceeds a certain threshold. And the character should also realign itself when we begin moving if a turn-in-place animation has not yet played. And that is the functionality we're going to implement. If I go into the character class, select the capsule component, and search hidden in game and disable that setting, compile, and play again, we can see our capsule, and the lines running along it can help us to see how its rotation matches our character's rotation. That's because the character mesh is a child of the blueprint that is our character. And so when that actor rotates, so does our mesh. One possible solution would be to disable the rotation of our actor when we're standing still. But that will lead us down a path full of issues when it comes to any sort of replicated multiplayer setup. Character orientation, location, and movement is replicated. It is predicted on the client, calculated on the server, and replicated to all clients. The animation instance, the class that our animation blueprint inherits from, is not replicated. It takes in information replicated by the server or predicted by the client and is calculated by each client for each character on screen. If we set some sort of value from within the animation blueprint and use that to rotate the character with a turn in place animation, it will not replicate properly and we will run into issues. Instead, we want to separate the rotation of the mesh from the rotation of the actor. To do this, we can rotate the root bone of the character. The root bone is the base bone in the character's hierarchy. Every bone in the character's skeleton is a child of the root bone. When the root bone is rotated, every other bone is rotated with it, and the same effect is achieved as if we were to rotate the actor itself just with keeping the actor's rotation and rotating the mesh separately. So what we're going to do is counter rotate the mesh based on the rotation of our character blueprint. Inside of our main animation blueprint within its main animation graph, I'm going to place a node in between the inertialization node and our IK nodes. I'll right click and search rotate root bone to get a rotate root bone node. I'll plug it in between th these two and if I give this yaw some value other than zero and compile, we can see that the character is rotated. Now if I play, we have that rotation, but our animation selection is not working with that rotation as we haven't worked in that 90 degree offset into any of our calculations. And besides that, we don't always want our root bone to be rotated 90 degrees. So, Let's create a variable to control our root yaw offset, and let's name it root yaw offset. I'll promote this to a variable, and I'll name it root yaw offset. I probably just said root yaw offset way too many times, but that's all right. Now, let's go ahead and create some basic functionality to manage our root yaw offset. Back in our ThreadSafe update animation function, we have a function here where we get our rotation data. Then we calculate an actor yaw delta by getting the current yaw of the actor and the yaw from the previous frame set by this current yaw value before we update it. We get the difference between the two and use that to set an actor yaw delta. 
Previously, we used this to set our lean angle for our additive leans, but we're also going to use this to calculate how much root yaw offset to add each frame. I'm going to go ahead and create a new function to manage our root yaw offset, and I'm going to name it update root yaw offset data. There are three modes that we are going to have when it comes to controlling our root yaw offset. One named accumulate, where we accumulate offset each frame based on the rotation of our character. One named hold, where we don't affect the root yaw offset at all. And one named blend out, where we blend the root yaw offset back towards zero over time. To manage these modes, I'm going to create an enumeration in our animations folder. So under the blueprint section of this asset creation menu, I'm going to create an enumeration named E underscore root yaw offset mode. Inside of it, I'll add three enumerators, one named accumulate, one named blend out, and one named hold. I'll close out of this enumeration as we do not need it anymore, and I'll create a new variable in our base animation blueprint named root yaw offset mode, and I'll set its type to be that enumeration that we've just created. Additionally, I'm going to go ahead and create a new root yaw offset data category to keep things organized here on the side. Next, I'll go ahead and create a sequence node here with three execution pins. We'll first check this root yaw offset mode and see if it is equal to accumulate. If that is true, we want to accumulate our root yaw offset. We'll get back to that later on. Next, I'm going to duplicate these two nodes here, where we check the mode of our root yaw offset mode. And I'll actually grab this branch as well and plug that into the second execution pin. This time around, we're going to check if our root yaw offset mode is equal to blend out. And finally, off of the third pin, we're going to set our root yaw offset mode to blend out. When we accumulate root yaw offset, we're going to add root yaw offset onto our root yaw offset value so that our mesh remains facing in a certain direction while we rotate the camera freely. When we blend out root yaw offset, we are going to blend that root yaw offset towards zero over time. And when we are in the hold mode, which we don't check here, we just do nothing. So we don't need to have any logic based off of it. And finally, we set the mode to blend out just because in most states of our state machine, we're moving and we don't want to be accumulating root yaw offset. Now, if we set this value in a function bound to a node in our animation graph, which we will eventually do, it is going to overwrite whatever we do in this function as far as setting the root yaw offset mode goes. So we can override this setting or we set it to blend out and set it in any state or in any node where we want to specifically determine the mode of our root yaw offset. But if that node isn't being evaluated, then we will just go back and default to this blend out as this statement here is not going to be overridden by anything being done in the animation graph. To accumulate our root yaw offset, we're going to get our current root yaw offset and add a value to it. In this case, we're going to get the actor yaw delta that we previously created 
and we're going to multiply it by negative 1 and add that to our root yaw offset. We multiply it by negative 1 because we want to counter rotate our character. So by multiplying the amount of degrees we've rotated over the course of a frame by negative 1, we get the inverse to that rotation and then we accumulate that inverse rotation over time. Instead of directly setting our root yaw offset variable, there are a few things we want to do to manage this, as if we just continue to accumulate, we could exceed the range of negative 180 to positive 180 degrees. Instead of making sure we're within that range here, I'm going to create a function named set root yaw offset. It will take in root yaw in as a parameter. And that will, of course, be a float. We will call this function every time we want to set our root yaw offset variable. I will drag out from the input and get a normalized axis node. And this is going to take an angle and is going to clamp it to a range of negative 180 to positive. 180. Next, I'm going to use this return value from this normalized axis node to set our root yaw offset. I'm actually going to create some extra distance here because I'm going to create a new variable that we will need eventually, though we may not get to it in this video. And this variable is going to be named previous root yaw offset. I will add it here, and I will set it with the value of root yaw offset right before we set root yaw offset, so that we're essentially saving the value before we update it and always tracking what it previously was. With that done, I can go ahead and place our set root yaw offset function into our update root yaw offset data function and connect our operation here on these values into it. That's going to be it for the accumulation section. Now we can move down to the blend out section. There are different ways we can interpolate floats in Unreal Engine. In this case, we're going to use a node named float spring enter. It has a lot of inputs. I'll go ahead and walk through the process of what they're all going to be set to. For current, we're going to use our current root yaw offset. We're blending out our root yaw offset, so our target is always going to be zero. This node takes in a reference to a special type called a spring state. And what it does is it updates whatever variable we plug in here. As if it were to create and try to track its state, it would forget all that information each frame as the any variable existing within a function only exists within its scope and when that function is called, the variable is created. When it ends, the variable is deleted from a memory. And so it needs to track a variable that exists over the course of multiple frames, a state value that it sets. And so we can plug in a variable that we create to this reference input, and it will set that variable from within the function. And you can tell whether or not an input is a reference based on the shape of the pen. A normal variable is a circle while a reference is a diamond shape. I will drag out from that and promote it to a variable, and that will be named root yaw spring state. I'll go ahead and move it up into the root yaw offset data category. Finally, I'll just go ahead and set some settings here. Stiffness will be 80. Critical damping factor will be 1. Delta time is actually going to be another variable. I'll add an input into our update root yaw offset data function that is a float, and I'll name it delta time. And I'll right click and search it up to get that input variable. I'll plug it in. And finally, mass will be 1, and target velocity amount will be 0.5. With that done, we can get another instance of our set root yaw offset function and plug the return value of our interpolation node into it. Now, 
when our root yaw offset mode is set to blend out, we will interpolate it to zero using the float spring interpolation function and then set our root yaw offset each frame as we interpolate it. And that is going to be it for this function. So let's go ahead and go back into our blueprint thread safe update animation function. And I'm going to place our update root yaw offset data function into it. We'll need to mark it as thread safe and I'll go ahead and connect delta time up into it. Compile, and we have an error, and that is because I did not set this set yaw offset function to be thread safe, which I will do now. Compile, and we are good to go. Finally, before we wrap things up for this video, let's go ahead and implement some of our yaw offset functionality into our state machine. I'll go ahead and head into our animation graph and open up our locomotion state machine. Inside of the idle state, on its output animation pose node, I'll create a binding for its on update function. And I will name this new function update idle state. I'll go ahead and set our root yaw offset mode to accumulate. Back in our state machine, I'll enter into the stop state and I'll create a function bound to its update binding named update stop state. And in this case, we're going to set our root yaw offset mode to hold. If I compile, save, and go into our level editor to play, and begin turning the camera, our root yaw offset is being applied. If I move to start, we blend it out. And if we still have some root yaw offset while we stop, let me see if I can get that. We hold it as we stop. Now, there is some foot sliding, and that is because we're not taking our root yaw offset into account with our orientation warping. So let's go ahead and do that before we end out this video. Back in our state machine, I'll go ahead and go into blueprint thread safe update animation and then into our update orientation data function. I'll go ahead and create some space between our two locomotion angle calculations and I'll get our standard velocity locomotion angle and I'm going to subtract root yaw offset from it, and then I'm going to normalize the axis of the result. And I'll use that to set a new float variable named locomotion angle with offset. I'll go ahead and put that into an orientation data category that I've created and plug it in. We now have a locomotion angle that takes into account our root yaw offset. I'll go ahead and open up the locomotion layers animation blueprint and inside of the start locomotion layer, I'm going to change the locomotion angle variable access to be our locomotion angle with offset. I will do the same for our cycle layer And finally, I'll do the same for our stop layer. I'll compile. And now, orientation warping is applied properly. In the next video, we will cover adding turn in place animations so that when the rotation of the camera is too different from the facing of the camera while idling, the character will rotate to face along with the facing of the camera.